How's it going guys? You are Scotty here. Today we're going to talk about the principle of Bernoulli. I learned this maybe about three years ago and honestly it really changed the way I looked at the world. It really helped me out with my daily repairs and fixing and understanding mechanical things. Yeah, so I'd like to make a video about this very interesting phenomenon. It's not very intuitive, but once you get used to this idea, it'll help you if you're ever taking something apart or trying to fix something. It'll help you understand how certain mechanical devices work um, and anything that works with a, a fluid circuit. And by fluid, I mean anything that uses air or any type of a, a fluid, air is considered to be uh, a fluid as well, technically. But anyways, uh, let's let's talk about the principle of Bernoulli today and maybe uh, try and uh, look at some real world examples of how this manifests itself in the real world. Uh, you know, if you look this up on the internet, you're gonna see a lot of math. We're gonna stay away from the math today and just deal with the principle. Uh, here we have a pipe a skinny pipe that opens up into a bigger pipe. In the skinny pipe, the fluid is moving at a higher velocity and then when it hits the larger opening, it slows down obviously, because you know it's the same volume moving through the skinny pipe as the larger pipe. So intuitively makes sense that it would slow down when it hits the bigger pipe. But actually in the smaller pipe, this is sort of the counterintuitive part um, is the low pressure uh, side high so high velocity but low pressure and when we get into the bigger pipe move into the bigger opening we get high pressure and low velocity that is essentially the basics of the Bernoulli principle and I guess the non-intuitive part of this is that in the smaller pipe, you would tend to think that there may be higher pressure, but that is incorrect. In, uh, in a smaller pipe, there is lower pressure than in a larger pipe. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's look at some uh, real world examples of where this uh, is. This principle of Bernoulli is applied. Let's look at an air, air, airfoil. It is a uh, cross section of, a, of an airplane wing. Airfoil is designed like this so that the air moving over the top of the wing has to travel a further distance than the air moving underneath the wing and therefore has to travel quicker over the top of the wing. So what did we learn about the Bernoulli principle? High velocity, low pressure, low velocity, high pressure. In this case, we have a lower velocity air moving underneath the wing than We've got higher, higher velocity air moving faster over the top of the wing, and that creates a high pressure on underneath the wing and a low pressure on top of the wing, which lifts the aircraft up. Now here I have a, a house with a chimney. So you could have a wood stove in here or, or a furnace or whatever. The way a chimney works is, is very similar. So outside you have a, a bit of a breeze blowing over the top of the chimney, and that's higher velocity air. And what do we know about the Bernoulli principle? High velocity, low pressure. So what you end up with is a higher pressure environment inside the house, which forces air up, up through the chimney. Let's look at a couple more examples. No, no, don't get out. It's okay. Tired. Okay. That's all right. Lie down. Lie down. Life is hard. Life is hard. Not you already. You had food. You had like you had two breakfasts. You had two breakfasts, and you yeah, already gave you a bunch of treats. So here's another example. Here we have uh, two large container ships passing each other in a channel. And you have to be really careful in this situation. If the ships cross each other with a good distance apart, they will have no problem. But if the two container ships get too close together, they end up with a situation where water starts running quicker through this smaller section of water between the two ships and creates a high velocity environment, which creates a low pressure between the ships and a high pressure on the outsides, which forces them in and then they can collide. It's the same reason why when you're driving on the highway, if you go 
uh, past a transport truck and you're driving a, a, a big vehicle, you, you feel yourself getting sucked in towards the transport uh, or when two transport trucks are, are passing each other going opposite directions, oftentimes they'll get sucked in towards each other because of the uh, principle of Bernoulli. Um, let's actually look at a couple interesting in examples on the inter interweb. One of them is a fairly scary example where a uh, jet skier who doesn't understand the principle of Bernoulli uh, gets a little too close to a container ship and almost loses his life when he gets sucked underneath the container ship. Come on, inside. Come on, let's go. In, in you go. Come on. Good girl. Come on, let's go. Inside. Go on. In you go. All right, uh, here we have this uh, jet skier moving towards a large uh, container ship. Sort of uh, playing around, having a good time right now but getting a little too close to the uh, hull of the container ship. As long as his uh, um, engine remains, but you can see he's, I'm not sure if he's turning. I think he's trying to get close just to have a little fun. You can see he's trying to touch the hull here. The only problem is that um, uh, the engine dies out here and he's trying to start the jet ski. His, his uh, engine kill cord comes off and he's being sucked towards the, the ship hull right now and um, this is a pretty scary moment here but fortunately he's able to uh, get the ski started back up and uh, get get away otherwise he would have been sucked um, pressed towards the ship and likely sucked underneath okay speaking of uh, jet skis um, here's another example right here this is the nozzle from a Jet ski pump. Actually, that's out of my wave jammer here. The pump, pump is right here. So high pressure is generated in that pump, and then it moves through this nozzle here. And there's a, a, a like a constriction here. It gets to the nozzle gets skinnier. So we know from the principle of Bernoulli that. In this case, we are changing high pressure into lower pressure, but we're gaining more velocity. So it, with jet ski pumps, it's kind of like, it's kind of a trade-off, you know? You, there's a, it has a lot to do with tuning between torque, low end, low end uh, power and top end speed. So, but essentially what you want, you can only go as fast on a jet ski as the water is coming out of the back of the pump. So. So yeah, so you trade a little bit of uh, power for velocity here. So that's another interesting application of the principle of Bernoulli. So sorry. Here's a, a hurricane, a video of a hurricane and um, a roof coming off a house. This is actually, uh, many people don't realize this, but this is actually the principle of Bernoulli um, at work here. So a lot of people think that the roof is blowing off the house. That's actually not, not entirely true. Okay, the, the... go back to our little drawing here. If you got very heavy winds blowing across the roof of a house, it sort of uh, creates this airfoil effect here. So the air moving over the top of the roof um, is moving very quickly, which creates um, low pressure, high velocity, low pressure. So you actually end up with a situation where the uh, air pressure inside the house is high pressure, low velocity, and the roof is actually pushed off the pushed off the house or almost um, it's almost like the the high winds sort of create a, a suction um, across the roof of a house and that's actually how roofs come off houses it has to do with the uh, principle of Bernoulli he was a, a very very smart 
scientist. Actually, his whole family. Uh, they were all very, very intelligent. Very intelligent, intelligent people. Yeah, the, the, that's a very... Uh, if, if you're interested, look up uh, Bernoulli, the family, the Bernoulli family. They were all, uh, all very smart. I think there was like 20 of them in the family and every single one of them was a was a genius. So. What I'm going to try and do now is uh, do a little demonstration with a carburetor demonstrating the principle of Bernoulli because that's exactly how a carburetor works. Um, I see another thing on my, my tool kit here that makes use of the principle of Bernoulli. This is an air gun. Simple looking thing. This has some holes on curiously on the outside of the gun and if we look at this if we understand the per principle of Bernoulli we can clearly see what's going on here so we've got high velocity air moving through this nozzle which there is a constriction here which which makes the air come out even faster which creates a low pressure environment here which actually ends up drawing air from the outside environment and you get a higher volume of air coming through here. So there's the principle of Bernoulli at work again there. So interesting. And then we can see if we can get this carburetor to, to demonstrate the principle of Bernoulli. Oh, were you eating dirt? Were you eating the dirt? <laughs> this would be the inlet of the carb. You can see there's a little tube, a little brass tube, uh, and you can see there's a, a constriction in the middle there where that tube comes up. We understand that the air that's being sucked through this carburetor is coming in through this larger opening here and then passing through the constriction, and which is speeding up the velocity of the air, high velocity, low pressure. This could also be called the Venturi effect. It... Um, atomizes the fuel and then the fuel passes through here and into the uh, cylinder where it's burned. I'm going to try and run some water through this and some compressed air to see if we can get this carburetor to demonstrate the uh, principle of Bernoulli. Okay so we've got the float and the needle valve back installed and like I said we'll do a different video on on how carburetors work. Essentially, just quickly though, the fuel comes down through here. This carburetor is upside down, and there's a bowl. It actually sits like this. Fuel comes in, fills the bowl, float comes up, and closes the valve. So that's how it regulates the amount of fuel in the bowl. Pretty, pretty uh, ingenious design. You see, it's just got this little tube in the middle. Air is going to move very quickly through that constriction there, create an area of low pressure, which is going to uh, force the fuel out through that little brass tube, and it will atomize the fuel, and we'll see how this works. I'm not sure if that carburetor demonstration really got the point across or not. I'm not sure if I was really filmed that very well, but I think you get the idea. That's how a carburetor works or any type of atomizer that you might, might be using. All right, so this all ties into something called the law of conservation of energy, which if you remember back to uh, grade 11, physics I guess or you know it's you could apply it to any any science the law of conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed only converted from one form to the other the principle of Bernoulli follows this law perfectly if we look if we look at it again we've got a certain amount of energy in this system a low pressure high velocity a lot of kinetic energy uh, but not a lot of uh, static 
pressure or pressure. I don't know if it's static pressure, but just pressure. In this system here, we are converting it to a high pressure, so more pressure, more energy in the pressure um, sense, but lower kinetic energy, lower velocity. So each each part of this pipe has the same amount of energy, but just in different forms. Um, sort of the similar way to uh, a transformer would work in electronics. Uh, we could talk about that in another video, but essentially this sort of works the same way. And you'll find a lot of things in in the, um, you know, with the electrical engineering and, and, and mechanical engineering, uh, they sort of cross over. And in physics and stuff like that, it's it's interesting how all these principles just sort of cross over into different domains. You can think of it in a mechanical sense as almost like a bicycle, you know, when you're changing gears on a bicycle. The same kind of idea is, uh, is uh, using different gear ratios, but uh, within the domain of fluid mechanics. And we have to uh, remember to think of gases um, like the like our atmosphere and our you know, here at sea level, this is a fluid uh, that we're living in. Uh, it behaves the same way as a fluid. Different densities, but, um, and one could arguably say there are some differences since, you know, flu uh, you know, actual fluids are said to be non-compressible, whereas a gas, you can compress it, but, you know, they tend to still behave, um, follow the principle of Bernoulli. Anyways, I hope you found that video interesting. I hope you can incorporate this principle into your daily lives. I hope it'll allow you to see things in your daily lives a little, uh, a little differently. You already ate dinner. You already ate it. Oh, I am so sorry. You are right. It's, it's past your dinner time. Okay. Okay. You are totally right. I am wrong. Okay, let's get you some din dins. Let's get you some din dins. I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. Lost track of time. Lost track of time. There you go. There you go. Oh, is that good? Breathe, breathe, breathe. Now, uh, that probably wasn't a, a super awesome explanation of the principle of Bernoulli. I apologize. I'm doing my best. I'm going to put a link in the description of a better video that you can watch from uh, Professor Julius Sumner Miller. Uh, you may recognize him from the hilarious House of... Frankenstein. Hilarious House of Frankenstein? Yeah, I think he was the press professor on that show. Anyways, I'll, I'll leave a link to his much better video. And also, I'm going to put a link in the description to a much better carburetor video by Destin from Smarter Every Day. Did a wonderful carburetor video, some excellent shots in there of how carburetors work better than I can ever do. I don't have any high speed cameras or anything like that, but he has all that kind of stuff. So check out the two links in my description uh, for much better videos on that topic. I hope you enjoyed that. You all, Scotty out. We'll see you soon.